So, as you recall, on Tuesday I took you to this new stable. And today I mainly planned to take you to this one. But I ended up making a day of it in Sumo Land, and also went here, which is where I will begin. Welcome to the Sumo Association's Hakuho Exhibition, which began this January when this snap of his replica cups was taken, and ends this September, if you're planning to come. There is some really moving stuff here. That drawing I told you of, the one he made at Sumo School embodying his ambitions, is right here, along with his early notes from class, with even English transliterations. So new to Japanese was he. We have his father's Olympic medal, the one that inspired him through those final days of that final title win. We have his actual Yokozuna license, the words outstanding dignity and ability, elegantly brushed onto premium grade paper made from Japanese mulberry bark. We have these 70 year old aprons, repaired in 2007 for Hakuho's first ever Yokozuna ceremony. We have one of his white hemp belts alongside a sword he himself helped forge. We have the floor cushion in honor of his 40th title win. We have the match day belt he was going to wear for his final outing. The same purple red as he'd worn in his first salaried tournament 18 years ago, but which was tragically overcut and rendered unusable. Well, he did all right in his bronze one, I suppose, as this final champion's portrait proves. We have this gorgeous kimono, as well as traditional Mongolian dress. We have this statue with which you can have your picture taken. And highlight of the Hakuho pictures is this one from June 2011 in the Disaster Zone. His fiery eyes consumed by tsunami devastation. Best to come outside of tournaments when it's less crowded. Back then to Oshiogawa, the new stable built by the ex Takekaze and at quite some expense. In fact, a building of this size downtown impresses me slightly more than one of this size in the country. Such is the difference in land price. But it seems the top two floors of Oshiogawa are private apartments, either rented or sold to help pay off the loans. Kasugano and Tokitsukaze stables operate a similar business model. Only four wrestlers reside here now, but that number should grow. As you can see, there are nice incentives. Location-wise, it's among several older buildings, about three kilometers from the Sumo Hall. The nearest stable, easily reached from this nearby street, is Hakuho's which I dropped by en route and saw Ishiura playing catch with a baseball glove post-morning training. My best contact there, Hoka Ho, reminded me of the sumo-themed cafe nearby, Norakudo, which he really rates. I therefore enjoyed my lunch there, surrounded by sumo artifacts, including, I believe, an ink painting by Terutsuyoshi. Messages from foreign diners can also be seen, so feel free to visit yourself. I also, at Ryogoku Station, bumped into four Nishonoseki boys returning from Sumo School, and spoke with Watanabe, who debuted last month. He confirmed he really did join Sumo through Twitter, and that could indeed be a historical first.
In response, I simply told him to keep rewriting history. And it's important to note this going forward. No matter how much footage I show you, the best sumo moments, the most special ones, will always happen off camera. Wrestlers naturally talk most when I'm not filming. Gaining their trust must come first, and much of what they say I cannot repeat just yet. But please know that outside of these videos, lots of new relations are being formed. That's what keeps the channel real and sets it apart. And you will see results in the longer term.